Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite seen here, an ultra lightweight gaming mouse from Logitech, with the Logitech G502 Lightspeed. These are two mice that cost roughly the same amount of money and yet offer vastly different features. They have similar specifications in some ways, but they're also strikingly different, not only in aesthetics, but also in features and the way. Way they can be used. The G Pro X Super Lite is designed to be incredibly lightweight and agile, cutting down on all the unnecessary features you might find elsewhere, while the G502 is brimming with features, buttons, and various different facets to it. I've done separate videos unboxing both these mice and going into a lot more depth, so if you're interested, check out the links in the description to find out more, but I'm going to talk to you about the highlights and features of them as we go through this video and show off some of the interesting features on there and show why they're different and why you might like to consider either of them if you're thinking about purchasing a new mouse and wonder what's on offer. Now these are two mice that have similar features as I said in terms of the specs they offer. For example they both use Logitech Hero Sensor which is now capable of up to 25,600 dpi. The G502 was updated with a firmware update to make it capable of that and the Superlight has launched with that maximum dpi setting. They both have 40g acceleration of 400 ips and 1000 hertz polling rate and they're both able to last and last. They are both powered by Logitech Logitech's Lightspeed wireless dongle, as you will see a tiny little dongle that's included in the box, and they both have a similar setup in terms of micro USB cable and charging. Also, some other similarities struck me in terms of things like this removable base plate underneath with the G logo on it. On the G502 Lightspeed, that came off and gave you access to a little dock underneath where you could put some weights, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. And on the G Pro X Superlight, it's designed to enable you to not only dock your micro USB Lightspeed dongle when you're not using it, but also to swap out that cover for a PTFE rich one to give you even more glide and smooth action on your mouse without adding extra weight. Where the G502 Lightspeed is designed to be customizable in terms of weight, the G Pro X Super Light is designed to be as light as possible even when you add in this extra cover. You can see the bottom of it is largely made up of that wonderful PTFE, so it slips around nicely. Now, as I said, both mice use the same Logitech Lightspeed wireless dongle, a tiny little USB dongle that comes with an adapter that you could see there, and both can house their little dongle inside themselves like this when you're not using it. So when it's not plugged into your PC, you can tuck it away neatly under this cover and keep it safe because it is small and you might lose it if you're taking the mouse with you somewhere outside or if you're just not using it plugged in at that time. Now the G502 is interesting because it's customizable so you can add in some extra weights. As standard it's 114 grams, but you can add an extra 16 grams into it and you see these little weights included in a little carry case, nifty little design, which allows you to customize the feel and weight of it by simply just putting those weights into that little plate and adding them in and slipping that in in the back there and then having extra weight. So you can customize the weight and feel of the mouse to your personal preference. But as I said, as standard, it's 114 grams. So it's fairly hefty as default. Now, in my mind, when I first used this mouse, I didn't think that was a bad thing. I feel like you're paying quite a bit of money for this mouse and so you're getting a good quality feel to it. It's got quite a heft to it, a nice solid design. It feels good, it looks good. It's got a nice ergonomic shape to it, as you can see. It has a nice variety of things included. You've got a nice braided K. We have that nice carry case with the weights. You've got the little wireless dongle, you've got multiple buttons, RGB lighting zones. I'm going to include all the specifications in the description, by the way, if you'd like to compare them on paper. But you can see just from these shots the differences between them. There are 11 programmable buttons on the G502 Lightspeed. You have side buttons with a thumb, you have a DPI shift button that allows you to basically activate a low DPI sniper mode and all sorts. The G Pro X Superlight by comparison just has five buttons and that's two thumb buttons on the side. The middle mouse button 
and the left and right clicks as usual. You can customize them within the software. It's worth noting that within the software, you can program a secondary action using Logitech's G Shift technology, which means that if you press and hold one button, you can then assign a secondary action to the other ones, but it's still limited by the number of buttons that you can have. And there's no DPI shifting button on here, so you can set multiple DPI levels, but you can't shift between them. Now, as I said, both mice use the same wireless dongle. They also both come with the same adapter. Basically, this is an extender. So usually you plug that little tiny dongle into your PC and then you're, it will just connect automatically to the mouse when you turn it on. Then when you need to, you could plug this micro USB cable into the mouse to charge when you needed to. Or alternatively, you plug that into the dongle and you keep it on your desk. Then when you need to charge your mouse, you can simply unplug it from that dongle and plug it into the mouse. That makes things easier. As long as you don't mind having a cable on your desk, you ensure that the dongle is in short, close range to your mouse so that the signal is good. And you also have easy access to be able to charge when you need to. As I said, though, it is worth noting that both these mice have decent battery life. The G502 is capable of up to 48 hours with the lighting turned on or 60 hours with it off. The G Pro X Superlight can manage up to 70 hours. Both of them are also capable of using Logitech's PowerPlay mat system, which is their powered mouse mat system, which basically allows charge constantly through the mouse mat into the mouse which means that you can just go forever and ever. So you don't even need to worry about battery life. So whichever one you pick up, if you go for the power play system, you can keep that going and going. Another highlight to the G502 over the G Pro X Superlight is the infinite scroll wheel. So you see this scroll wheel here, you can basically spin it and it will just keep spinning and spinning and spinning. There's a button on top. You can switch between a tactile mode and like an infinite spin. I at first thought it was gimmicky, but it is also very satisfying and there are a number of different use cases to it. I also really like the design of the G502. It's angry, it's ergonomic, it has textured grips on the side, you've got a little rest for your thumb. On the top left there by the left mouse button you have DPI up and down buttons that you can adjust the DPI on the fly. You can also see the levels are represented in a little LED light along the side there. So you've got nice and easy access to that. That front thumb button is a DPI shift button. So you can drop down into a low DPI level. You also have left and right click on the mouse wheel. So you can see there's more buttons on here, easier access hardware buttons to get hold of and really easy to use in that way. It also has textured grips on the right hand side. And so it's a lot more feature rich than the G Pro X Superlight. However, the Superlight is designed to be agile and nifty and fast and lightweight and satisfying in that way. And it certainly is. It's very comfortable and easy to use. And you could basically just fling it around really quickly. It has customizable DPI levels that you can change within the software, but there's no hardware button to change between them, which is a bit of an oddity. And the matte texture of it is nice in terms of the grip. I did find that it picked up some oil from my fingers quite quickly. So that's Mars, the plastic, which is a bit of a shame. It is worth noting that it is available in white as well. though, So you can get a white one, which probably looks a lot nicer. It also comes with stickers that you can put on there as grip tape. So grip tape for the left and right and for the top and left and right mouse buttons as well. So you can make it a bit more grippy and nicer in that way. That's something that the G502 doesn't have, but the G502 has that texture that you can see here on either side, which I feel makes it easier to grip. In terms of style and design quality, I think that the G502 feels like it's worth the money more than the G Pro X Super Lite. And that might be a personal thing. I feel like lightweight mice sometimes verge on feeling cheap in the hand, but that's my personal opinion. And I was really struck by how much money the Pro X Super Lite costs when you look at specs and features of it compared with the G502, which has a lot more going for it. However, if you're looking for a super lightweight mouse, then the G Pro X Super Lite is fantastic. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you. 
and have a great life.